All right. So we're going to talk about systems of linear equations, and we're going to solve them by graphing. First off, what is a linear system? Well, when you have two equations or more, say x plus 2y equals 3, 2x minus 3y equals 5, something like that, one or more than two or more equations. And they're limiting what your outcomes can be. And so when we are asked to solve a, a linear system, we're asked to find the point of intersection. And so three things can happen. Find the point. So either the lines could intersect and you have a solution. And when we talk about that, what's the, the, the answer going to look like? It's going to look like a point, an x, y coordinate. Um, then it could also give you parallel lines. No solution. Because the lines don't ever touch, there's no x or y that they have in common. Sorry, x and y together. Or they could be the same line. And that's when you have infinite solutions. And you say, well, wait a minute. If both of those were the exact same, you would notice. Um, yes, you would. Now, what you might have are perfect multiples of them. And so they they're cleverly disguised. But so... We'll talk about what those will look like. Infinite solutions, meaning they're the same line, meaning any point on the line. Any point on the line is a solution. Infinite solution does not mean there are infinite. Any answer is correct, because if you're not on the line, that's incorrect. But if you are on the line, this is a point, this is a point. Every point here is a solution, whereas if they just intersect, there's only one point that both lines have in common. So, we're going to talk about finding these points graphically first, and then we'll talk about finding them algebraically. So to graph these lines, um, y equals 5 plus 2x. You could just say, well, 5 is the y-intercept, so go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the slope is 2. So up 2 and over 1. It's rising. You could also go backwards, continue the pattern the opposite way. And so there's your, your line. And then the other one has a, a y-intercept of 8. So 6, 7, 8. And a slope of negative 1. Down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Remember that there's no number in front of the x, right? And so you can already see where that point of intersection is going to be. And we just need to name it. 1, 7. And so having graph paper is essential here. Otherwise you're messing with human error of trying to find the common widths the same, things like that. Remember that you don't always have to have it in slope-intercept form. We could just find x and y intercepts. If um, say x is 0, if x is 0 that cancels out, y is 13, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to guess there a little bit, but we can use it to our advantage. And then if the y cancels out, 2x equals 13. If y equals 0, so y equals 13, 2x equals 13, so x equals 6.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. And so you have those two lines that we're connecting there. And then our other line, x equals 5. 
if y equals 0, that cancels out. x minus 0 is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if x equals 0, negative y equals 5. So y equals negative 5. So 1, 2, 3. You could also solve um, you could also solve for y and get the slope intercept. I just wanted to show you how you could find the x and y intercepts of that. So that point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma 1. So that's the point of intersection. One more. x minus 2y equals 4. So I'm going to solve this. I'm going to say x equals 2y if I add the 2y over to the other side. And then 1 half x equals y. So no y-intercept. y-intercept is 0, up 1, and over 2 because the slope is 1 half. Up 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2 going the other way. So putting it into slope-intercept form. X and Y intercepts don't help you in this one because both of them are zero and then you can't pick out which one is the, the Y intercept. 2Y equals negative X plus 4 if you subtract the X to the other side. And then Y equals, make sure that you divide both of these by 2. That's negative 1 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So up 2 y-intercept, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, and so you have that line, 2, comma 1 is the point of intersection. All right, congrats, we've done it. So, graphical, it's nice, it's a little tedious because you have to graph it, and you have to graph it well to be able to tell. Now, if, if the answers aren't perfect, it's a little harder to tell. Um, and so that's why we have an algebraic method that we'll talk about. But this is a good way to get a picture of it. So a basketball player was excited about his play during the last game. Remember, they scored two three-point shots. Couldn't recall how many three throws. So two three-pointers. Record keeper said they had scored 20 times for 34 points. 20 scores, 34 points. So, field goals, those are worth two points. Free throws, worth one point. And then we have the three-pointers, worth two points each. So, let's let the field goals represent X and the free throws represent Y. And make up an equation dealing with how many... How many times he scored? And one with how many points? And so you want to look for things while you're writing these equations like that. He scored 20 times. Well, that had to do with X amount of field goals plus Y amount of free throws. Um, and actually, plus we knew he made two three-pointers, so let's say plus two equals a total of 20. And if you wanted to, you could change that to x plus y equals 18. And then with how many points he scored, well, field goals are worth two points each. So two times however many of those plus y, those are worth one point each. One y, if you, weigh, if you will. Um, and then two three-pointers, so that's a total of six points, equals 30 four points altogether. So 2x plus y equals, um, and let's subtract the 6 over, so that's 28. What I want to do now is use our graphing calculator to solve it. In order to do it in the graphing calculator, calculator let's put it into y equals. And so I'm going to just do 18 minus x, and y equals 28 minus 2x. And I'm going to put those into y equals on the calculator. Hit y equals, you get 18 minus x, 
28 minus 2x. And I didn't mean to do that. Zoom 6 gets you to the regular window. Now, you notice our line's going like that. We need a bigger window because we've got a bigger y-intercept and a bigger y-intercept. So let's go to 30 as a max on both the x and on the y and see if that gets us a bit bigger picture. What I hit was window and I changed that. So now you can see where they're intersecting so that we know where is it that the x and y were the same. What I'm going to do is calculate second and then the trace button where the point of intersection is. Now it says first curve so we're on our y1, just hit enter. We want to know where that one intersects our second curve, y2. Hit enter again. And we can say guess. Intersection point is 10, 8. Ten field goals. And eight free throws. And again, how we did that was y equals y1, y equals y2, and then second calc intersection. We found the intersection point. So try that again on your own, see if you can replicate it, and it comes in very, very handy. And we'll keep talking about different ways that we can utilize that.